will first start explaining what Rio 20 plus 20 is and what kind of an impact you're envisioning it to have. Well, Rio plus 20 is coming 20 years after the Rio Earth Summit of 1992 and indeed 40 years after the UN Conference on the Human Environment which took place in Stockholm, Sweden which actually incidentally uh, gave birth to the UN Environment Program. 40 years ago people were theorizing that there were coming, arriving big global environmental issues. In 1992 in Rio people were now glimpsing the impacts of what you might call unsustainable development on the prospects for the planet and the prospects for the planet's people. Now here we are 20 years on and many of those ideas that were theorized in 1972, glimpsed in 1992, are coming up hard uh, on, the, on, the, on the global radar. Climate change, loss of species, water scarcity, the degradation of the world's land. In the last 20 years, all the dials on the sustainability radar and the sustainability dashboard uh, are heading faster and faster into the red. So Rio Plus 20 is the opportunity to review how we have done as a world in the last 20 years, uh, a scorecard of achievement and failure, and then to renew but also to accelerate and scale up the positive things that have occurred in the last 20 years. There are some positive things all over the world. Communities and countries have achieved quite a lot in terms of cleaning up the air, in terms of reducing pollution in river systems, but it's not enough. We are so far off the mark in a world of 7 billion people going to over 9 billion by 2050 that we need to get smart, we need to move much faster on the positive areas and we need to accelerate and scale up. The youth are going to be facing the biggest problems of the mm -hmm. next generation so as you know doing anything or making more programs so the youth can actually participate in making a change. Well, let me say, I think that the challenge facing the planet requires not just the youth, but it requires the older people as well. I think it requires all sections of society, no matter what your age is, to be part of the solution. It requires business, and it requires school children, and it requires university students, and it requires, you know, political leaders and heads of state. It requires everybody to act. As part of that, UNEP is uh, planning right now with the rest of the UN system to try and create what we call a youth blast, which is a meeting of young people in Rio who can basically not only debate the ideas but provide the kinds of actions and outputs that we need to inform governments and what they want as young people. You know UNEP is asked by governments as well to um, analyze the state of the planet. We produce these big reports called the Global Environmental, Global Environmental Outlooks. The fifth one will be launched just around World Environment Day in Rio just before Rio Plus 20. But I was just in Nairobi, where we're headquartered, and young people were there producing a geo, a global environment outlook for youth. And they have been collecting these inspiring examples of how different countries and communities are actually moving towards a green economy. And these will be part of the analysis in the geo for youth, which will be launched early in June. So there are many opportunities for youth. And let's remember, it was a young person in 1992 that set the world alight with her speech at Rio de Janeiro at the Earth Summit in 1992, Severin Suzuki from Canada. And if you look at that YouTube uh, speech that she delivered to the world's leaders in 1992, it still remains the most powerful speech by anybody at the Rio Earth Summit in 1992, and it was by a young person.